Hi, this is Tom. Welcome to my channel. I've been doing a series of videos on using ChatGPT to do Midjourney prompts. And Midjourney just came up with a new version 6.0 that I've been looking through. And I wanted to share some images that I created um, using that. I'm going to turn myself off here because I'm, I'm quite tired and I don't want my uh, hallowed, ha that's not the right word, Herod, uh, you know, look to detract uh, from the art. <clears throat> okay. So this is, I was, I, I, I sort of have mixed emotions and I'm, be interested to see if people weigh in on um, that are, are more knowledgeable about art than I am. Um, so I'm, I'm not an art expert, just uh, a fan. Uh, particularly, I like French 19th century art quite a lot. And um, I like uh, landscapes a lot. And and, uh, you know, Impressionist, Post-Impressionist um, in particular. But lots of different pictures, but styles I, I enjoy. But in particular, I would say Impressionist, uh, Post-Impressionist, and French landscapes. And as I was doing this yesterday for the, the Daily Theme, the Daily Theme now is just version 6.0. Uh, daily theme is a channel in the journey that you can use to uh, play around with whatever the daily theme is so that the daily theme will be required in the prompt that you do. So here the requirement is simply V6.0, so you can do anything you want with that. And the when I said I was the I'll ex I said that my I had mixed emotions, so I'll explain what I mean. And I would say, like, there are a lot more on the plus side than on the minus side. On the plus side is, I, mean, I, I look at an image like this, and, and I think this is just indescribable. I mean, I'm, I'm lost for words. This is just so, so good. that if from I've been doing this for just time flies, like it's for most of the year. And I started with version 4. And with version four, you had to, you know, you, you would include include fine art as part of the prompt, and and I remember spending lots of time trying to get the artwork to look like artwork and not like a a photo. And you just tried different prompts to like emphasize brush strokes and all sorts of different things. And I tried to to get it to look, you know, some you know more more like a painting. And this is just so head and shoulders above what, what what that was. And I would say even compared to five, version five, th th this is just so far advanced in terms of just looking more painterly. Because I mean, if you, if you, go, you know, go to a museum and, and you look at a painting up close, you, you'll, you'll see things like this. You'll see all of these, you know, different sorts of uh, colors and you know, paint paint strokes and you know paint dabs and so on, and I mean this really looks like a painting, and you can see it's just a lot more nuanced than the version five. Just look at all of the color here uh, and the values. It's just, and I mean you can really, it's almost like you're looking at a painting. You can see the brush strokes and it's just amazing, really amazing. So that's on the plus side. On the minus side, I would say, and um, I would like defer to, to you know someone's more expert than I am. But what what I noticed on version five is that if I looked at the artwork, and um, I could I could tell it it would look like a Cezanne painting or a Monet or a Renoir or or whatever. And as I'm looking at these, I don't see that as much. I'm not seeing the individual style of the artist as much. And uh, I, I know I, I can get, let me, let me go down a ways. And I'll, I'll show a specific example of 
what I'm talking about from yesterday. This is be a more recent artwork. Um, you find it here. Okay, I'm looking for, yeah, this is what I was looking for. Okay, so this is Maria Coleman. Uh, okay, so it's Quirky Socatra. All right. Now, I'm not sure if I've got a 5 0 version of this, but if you go to, um, if I just go to Google, and what was, let me make sure I get the spelling right. Uh, it's uh, Myra. Okay, Myra Coleman. All right, Myra Coleman. All right, Myra. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to pull up here. All right, so this this is typical. This these it's not making this bigger. Um, there we go. It made it bigger. Okay. So these th this style here on the on the right is you know typical of her of her artwork and um, if you do a version 5.2 you'll get something that looks more like this uh, as opposed to something that looks like uh, what we were just looking at like this so this is a, a stunningly beautiful picture but it doesn't have the same stylistic uh, look as a version 5.2 and to look in terms of the artist looking like more like the artist uh did the did the painting so that was sort of the mixed emotion of it and um I'm not, i i'm not sure exactly how the process works like if what if they've actually done the actual release or if they're still um uh, tweaking it or whatever they're doing. But I'll show some of the pictures and I'll be interested if anybody else has, has sort of noticed the same thing that I noticed, which is that the, the, the paintings are stunning, but it doesn't look to me like it's being as close to looking like the actual artist as the version 5.2. But this is uh, a Manet, um, I thought these were, I did this yesterday, I thought these were just, look at the clouds here, just in the shadows and, and here in the snow, this is great snow. You can see the different colors in the snow, uh, you know, the blues and the browns and just looks a lot more to me like, so all of these look a lot more like paintings that you would see in a museum. Um, just. This looks like Monet to me. This is like, if you go to, you look at a Monet close up in the museum, you'll see stuff that looks just like, uh, in the lower right here, just like that. And uh, so yesterday I was, I did several on uh, Montmartre, because I, I like Montmartre pictures. That's uh, the, in Paris where the Sacre Coeur church is, and also where the artists hang out. Um, this you can see, it's got nice pastel kind of look to the clouds. And I think that's kind of a nice touch, isn't it? The, in the upper right, you got a little leaf, looks like to me hanging over from the tree. And another Monet in the, uh, you can just see that if you compare this to the 5.2, there's just so much more color and, you know, and the small, like, uh, by color, like the, the number of colors. If there's, a, I don't know how many colors there are here, but there's, looks like dozens. And that's what you would see in an actual Monet painting. Whereas if you look at 5.2, you won't see that many colors, not, not near that many. Although, as I said, it might look, the style might look more more like it. Uh, th this one I like quite a bit. This was a Van Gogh, and I think it did a good job, really good job. This is the 6.0 on capturing Van Gogh's style. So that might be sort of, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess I'm going to have to look at this some more. It might be sort of hit and miss. Um, but I'll, I'll show what I was talking about in one. This to me looks like, like Suzanne. 
And again, I, I just look at these clouds. They're wonderful. The, so are, and the trees also just, uh, you know, very, very nice. Um, so let me get to the ones. Okay, so these are the ones from today. This was like the, the Gleaners uh, style kind of look to it. And what I did was I did some paintings were um, where I gave it, I gave the same scene. I'll come to that in just a second. This one I thought was also really wonderful. This is um, like a rainy scene and you can see how it looks like, you know, brushwork and how it was able to capture the idea of, you know, a rainy scene and also something that I liked on this new style that I thought was quite nice is, um, I'll see how well I can explain this. It's, um, in painting, one of the, you want to try to suggest uh, forms and let the eye of the looker kind of fill in the details. And I see a lot more of that sort of technique on the, uh, on the 6-0 you know, like some of the people you can look at that they look to me like something you would see in in a, in a in an actual painting, just the way that the fo the forms are made. That uh, and uh, you know, using the impressionist style of suggesting uh, certain forms. Uh, here, the, the interplay of the light on the water, it seems like it's, done, and, and also you can see in the trees too, the light in the trees. So here I think I got to where I did the same scene with different artists. So this, this is uh, Impressionism, Monet, Seaside at Sunset. All right, so this would be an example of what I was talking about where I can't really tell the differences. This is Degas, this is Monet, and this is Renoir. They're all the same. They're all the same scene. The only difference being the artist. And these all look the same to me. I think they're all gorgeous. Look at this one. This one in particular, I thought was just, just amazing. It's like, you know, like an, a real art picture that you can, look at for a long time and really study, you know, like in a, in a museum, uh, you know, try to see what's going on. And, and a pre, this has that kind of, to me, um, complexity and nuance interest, just to see, uh, you know, just all, what else is going on here. Uh, this, this one, I think, this is probably the one I, I like the most of the group that I did today, just look, how many colors are here? It's just dozens and dozens of different colors. And you can, it just, it looks like a painting. Well, just fabulous, but possibly on the negative side. And again, it could be partially because I'm just not knowledgeable enough, but it, it doesn't, it seems to me that these are all sort of the same style is supposed to be uh, really capturing more of the actual artist. But in terms of like catching impressionism, then I mean that, that it's really done fantastically well. Just, I, this is uh, another one of these paintings with these amazing skies and just uh, hard to come up with words. So I'd say these are my favorite, these sky with waves. Um, yeah, these sorts of paintings so far. I mean, I haven't done that much exploring with it, but I, when I was exploring yesterday, I did a number of different things. And the ones that really caught my eye were like these, these uh, impressionist 19th century type paintings. Um, so this one 
is quite nice, but this is post-impressionism. It doesn't seem to me like as tremendous as this one. So I'll have to look around some more, but um, I did this in, th this one I, I quite liked it. It's kind of hard to put into words, but the way that this fellow is just kind of looking off into the side. Um, and it, it looks to me like also in terms of composition, the way that it's putting together the pictures, that seems to me to have improved quite a bit too. Because this composition like, to me looks, uh, looks pretty solid. And... This this was another one that I I like the way that the AI put this together. These are all the same scene scenes with different artists. And again, I would say I, mean, I think these are tremendous paintings, but um, I I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these artists uh, like on some of the like on the five the five point two ones. It was a lot easier for me to to look at it and say, oh, um, you know, this looks like a Suzanne or a Van Gogh or Gauguin or whatever. But, I mean, it's it's hard to tell on something like this if it's, like, it might have been being simplistic in the way that it was doing just by, in 5-2, just by choosing certain scenes or, like, or, you know, Van Gogh, you can do the surly stars, you know, just as a, a quick quick fix, so to speak. So these are um, some French landscapes. This is Corot, another Corot. We look at the depth. You know, you can see the in the horizon. These are this. It's a. Uh, some things are kind of like maybe not so pleasant for the times that we're living in now, but other things. Uh, are pretty amazing, like, and I say what's happening with AI is this is uh, this is a, a Turner, and just look at the way the the waves are on this. It's really wonderful. I remember I've gone to a museum and looked at the brushwork, and I go, go like real close, and then come back to a distance and sort of. Uh, see how the artist was able to kind of capture the depth um, where you look at it closer, it looks like paint strokes and you don't really see the picture, but you walk away and then it comes into focus. And this has the same sort of feel to me as that. Well, oh, I did want to mention, I spent a little longer on this part that I wanted to, so I'll cut off the next part. Um, but I did want to mention about how I use ChatGPT to to do this, and perhaps I'll do a different video where I go into this in more detail. But I um, I gave it a template to use. This is it right here. So so I said this was the template art style, practitioner style, medium um, of subject, descriptor one, descriptor two, descriptor three. And I've found this to be quite a nice style to use. And I just had it fill in the details. And then for the descriptors, these are things which can add interest to the painting. Uh, and these are some examples. Time of day, viewpoint, color palette, weather condition, uh, mood or atmosphere, and so on. And so I, I gave it a list of these. These are like 30 different things and just uh, told it to choose three of these, put it together with the artist, the, the subject, the, the art style like Impressionism. And um, uh, the medium, like uh, I think these might be all oil paintings. And that was the style for all of these prompts that were used. So it has like Romanticism, the art style, the artist, the medium, a subject, and then it's choosing, you know, three different things um, from that list that I gave. And I think that's quite an effective technique to use uh, for 
using chat GPT to do uh, mid journey prompts. And I thought using that technique would be a nice way to generate these paintings. And uh, I might, I've already gone on quite a bit here, so I'll stop here. But in a future video, I might uh, go into that in more detail um, about using that the template approach for generating this sort of artwork. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, the the uh, 6.0 paintings. And until next time, thanks for watching.